Hello, everyone, and welcome to the number one podcast on this street. I'm your host, William Crosby. It's episode 62. I just realized I forgot to change the title of this episode on YouTube, so it's Big News Goes Here. Uh, joining me this week is one and only Ian Gibson. I Look, I know what street you live on. It's a very long street. I don't. I honestly don't think we can say the number one podcast on your street because a lot of people have podcasts and we ain't doing great. <laughs> so that's true. I should knock door to door and see if anyone else has a podcast. Um, yeah, it's the number one I'll, podcast in my apartment. I that's mean, oh, it really that, is. that I could believe. Yeah, that's exciting because it's not the number one podcast in my apartment. <laughs> uh, if we're counting podcasts we listen to. Uh, Kyle is here. Uh, his sister is house baking a cake. Kyle, it's your birthday today. When? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I Tomorrow. knew it. Yeah. Because Ian is going on a cruise for your birthday. Yes, that's right. And that's I'm right. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to open that present. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's, it's uh, it's the cruise. Yeah. Now there's more doors on yeah. a cruise ship than wheels. I can. We, can you explain that to me? I was trying to understand the etymology of that meme today. I, what is it, that? It, it, someone posed a question, are there more wheels in the world or doors in the world? Yeah. And I think it's doors. It's definitely doors. Because if you look up the definition of wheels, it has to be like a car wheel or an axle wheel. Like rollers don't count. I think anything anything called a a wheel. So like a steering wheel would count. Right. So like it, it a needs to have car like a... would have five wheels, but it also has four doors. And then you have things like houses and buildings that have zero wheels, but plenty of doors. Right. And so I think overall there's, there's more doors than wheels. Also four, four doors on a car, four wheels plus a steering wheel, plus cupboards or doors. Spare tires. Uh, I guess spare tires. Spare wheel. But yeah. is a spare tire a functional many... wheel? How many how many trolleys are there on a cruise ship? Like food trolleys. Well, that's oh true. yeah, that's a good point. But but st yeah, I don't know. Anyways, it's, anyways, I just I didn't think it was that interesting. It just was weird that it blew up, and I'm like, where did this? I feel come like it was from? interesting because I don't think uh, like that stuff becomes stupid when like The Verge writes an article about their opinion on it. But yeah, it's like or, fun to yeah. think about because it's one of those questions that you're like. Like, everyone knows an, an answer to it immediately until they start thinking more. And then it's like, oh. Yeah. Um, but honestly, um, this started as a joke. But I think it's a better question, which is it was from a I think it was from the Giant Bees cast. And it was Dan Reichert asked, what would happen if all the triangles in the world disappeared? And people were <laughs> like, Dan's so stupid. That's so stupid. Then they started thinking about it. They're like, what? wait what and like you start thinking about it what if there were no triangles in the world and it's just like what because it's such like it's such a very strong utilized shape in construction of any form i think everything like, would fall down immediately the pyramids would be interesting yeah all bridges all arches all bridges. is just like well, yeah so that, i like that one a little bit better yeah oh that's a yep. nightmare uh anyways a bunch we're not of 90s here. logos would be gone Oh, yeah. All of them. The A mm -hmm. in local chat would be gone as well. Both A's. Dang it. There's two of them. We could round out the font, though. Um, we're not here to talk we'll, about we'll life's hit. questions. We're here to talk about video games. Uh, first, we've got to talk about what we've been playing. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ham. I, a ham. Ham is delicious. But also, I haven't played anything else except... Uh, well, Wheel of Fortune and Trivial Pursuit. But it, besides those games with Karen, I have only been playing Elden Ring. Boy, Elden Ring is a very good video game. Did you beat it yet? Are you done? No, I beat General Radon, who was the third he... boss. Oh, he's only the third? Everybody's talking about him, and, and looking at the gifts online, I thought he was, like, the final. Nope. So, so far, favorite boss fight. It was really fun. Uh, also... Um, made me so I, I think I talked about this last week. The first two boss fights, like, or first three, if you're technically counting Margit, I think I kind of rushed in the fact that I was still in that Dark Souls mentality where it's like, I gotta beat the bosses and get to the next area and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't until after uh, Renala, actually, not really, but it wasn't until after I beat Godric 
and I did a couple of tents at Ranala that I realized like, oh, I'm I'm playing this wrong. And I think it was kind of after talking to you and your experiences where I was doing a little bit of that exploring, but I was still trying to mainline. And yeah. then I just went out and did stuff. And I did a lot of stuff. And then I went back to the starting areas and I think I killed between eight and ten of those dungeon bosses. I just like went around in like four hours. Yeah. And like yeah. cleared them out, got stones and everything. Um, I leveled up a bunch of my weapons, leveled up my character a bunch. I think I have a plus 16 pickaxe now. Wow, that's you a use lot. a pickaxe? Yeah, it's giant and it's so much fun. Jeez. Um, and so I went and did General Don, and General Don's a great thing uh because you don't want to summon people to help you uh outside of the game because you can't then use your horse, and the horse is vital in that boss fight. And the mechanics of the boss fight I won't spoil here, but is really, really cool and made me appreciate like working towards that kind of boss fight and like beating it and like hitting my head against it, but not in a bad way. And like, oh, I need to do this this time and this this like how to change my strategy up. Um, and that was really cool. Uh, so what's your, what's your starting class or what, what did you start as? I started as astrologer, but I actually respect uh, to be more strength. Mm -hmm. uh after after you beat renala you can respec uh using this currency that I, I in the area now i'm getting the currency um which i got from a different spot before so yeah i respect and now i'm mostly strength i still like i use magic still because it's it's super helpful for some areas but yeah i i, I two-hand that giant pickaxe and oh it feels so good it just it feels so good uh kyle you have started this game i've i've noticed yeah, yeah. Uh, just a couple of days ago, and um, it, I'm almost 40 hours into it. Uh, I have never played a Dark Souls game before, other than playing, I think, maybe like two hours of the first one, and then a couple hours in Bloodborne. They were both on my buddy's um, PS4 or PS3 or whatever, and I just mm -hmm. I never got to finish them. So I just sort of, you know, I was like, I'm a, I'm aware of them. So this was the first game that I was like. You know, I actually kind of want to jump in in this, and I think it helped a lot because the hype was so big for this game, and uh, it just it inherently feels different because it's open world. You can sort of go at your own pace. A lot of the stuff that you guys talked about last week um, was was stuff that I was aware of going into it this week, and um, I really took my time in that first area, um, especially like going further south, like the, the southernmost point that you can go with Castle. Yeah, uh, mourn. Um, like that was sort of like my. Uh, that was that was the bar that I set for myself to be like, okay, I'm gonna continue on once I can beat Castle Morn, um, because I tried it and just got absolutely demolished. But um, I've also been doing a lot with the uh, what are the the knights in the circles, the El El Gore knights? Oh, or... uh, Ever Jail. Uh, yeah, Ever Ever Jail. Um, yeah, I, I've been having a lot of fun with those, and honestly. My friend Al, uh, who's been uh, commenting on on some of our streams uh, a few months ago, he's a huge Dark Souls fan, and he's played all the games multiple times, um, and Bloodborne, and he's been helping me a lot with co-op, which is a really interesting, like, that sort of asynchronous, almost kind of co-op experience, mm -hmm. uh, and... I don't necessarily enjoy the way that it's implemented, but when it works, it's really fun. Um, I hate being invaded, but it's always like... Uh, it, it can go either way, but it's it's annoying and fun at the same time, which I think is what it's supposed to be. So um, I've just been having a really good time with it, and uh, I, I'm excited to play more. And every every time I jump in, I'm like, well, what am I going to see this time? What crazy, insane thing is going to happen to me? And how badly am I going to need to level up for whatever it is that kills me next? So it's been it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm glad to hear so many people who are fresh to like from software games really get into it with Elden Ring because I think like it is the now going forward the perfect game to get into these games with and I don't necessarily think it will lead everyone to be like I gotta go play Dark Souls now or Demon Souls or whatever but I think it'll lead a lot of people to be like oh I think I could give these games a try and like get into that genre which which is pretty neat is uh, there is there a reason why Elden... And I, I am coming at this game from... I was aware that it was coming out, but I was not involved in, like, the hype train for it. 
is there a reason why this game, as opposed to like Dark Souls three or the or the remaster of, of Dark Souls, um, is so big? Because I was at a car wash waiting for my my car to get done, and this older gentleman who was probably like mid fifties was talking to a younger kid who he didn't know based on what they were talking about <laughs> about Elden Ring, and they were both like really getting into it. It was I've never I've rarely seen like people my parents age excited about a video game like this Mm -hmm. yeah i think it it kind of broke so i mean among from software dark souls fans soulsborne fans it was everyone was looking forward to it because sekiro came out and everyone knew it wasn't going to be like a dark souls thing uh even though i mean it's it's a different sort of departure to it so i think people we're just excited for Elden Ring. You heard about Elden Ring for so long, and then it became the big meme of when are they going to show Elden Ring? When are they going to have a trailer for Elden Ring? And that took off. And then I think this game came out, and I think it has taken over a lot of like SEO and Twitter and all that sort of stuff where it's hitting a lot of new stuff, and I think people mm-hmm. are just more aware of it. The same way... like. You, it's the opposite of why people were talking about cyberpunk on the news on like Fox yeah. News. Uh, it's just a good, it's just in the zeitgeist now. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that has really contributed towards like, like you're saying, like people you wouldn't normally think are talking about Elden Ring or people you wouldn't assume would play those games are trying it because it's a, they're trying it because so many people are talking about it and then they're trying it because it's actually kind of working out for them because they're not stuck into the Sisyphean thing that the other games are kind of doing uh yeah and it's funny i I noticed today uh, some backlash uh at my job i was i was looking at an article and reading a comment and this person i almost tweeted it but i decided it would be a bad idea but the person's like you can totally see like you guys gotta stop spamming elden ring uh articles we know the developers paying you and i just wanted to be (laughs) like do you not understand how like basic seo or anything like if a thing (laughs) is popular you push it as hard as you can to milk that for as long as it's popular i know i'm like it's like ah it's just and i was like i can't read comments on anything anymore you should have you you should have made a fake uh invoice to GameSpot from uh yeah from from software just be like for promotion twenty thousand dollars and like message them and like Psst, you found you found it um <laughs> also i looked at the person's account uh to see if i could find where they were in docs no uh, i looked at their account and it was created today and i was like oh you're just a jerk anyways um yeah. ian how is your elden ringing going um I haven't played the game in like four or five days. It's funny. It's very funny. I, I was making good progress. Um, I beat, I don't think I talked about this last stream. I beat Margaret. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to call him Margaret because I, I can't remember what his name is, let alone the correct way to pronounce it. So I beat Margaret and um, it was kind of funny. Like, like I tried him once like a couple hours into the game when it feels like they want you to go there and you go there and you get your, you're just not doing anything. And I did it once and I was like, okay, I'm going to go explore for a while. So I explored for a while. I came back. I tried him again at like level 25 and I was like, nope, still not there. So I left and I came back. I was like level 30. I had like a, like a plus three, uh, wolf spirits. I had like a plus five sword or something. And I just like let the, wo- like the wolves took them down to like 25%. The wolves are so good. They're yeah. And great. then I took them down the rest of the way. I, I basically like sp- Bed run that boss. It took me like 30 seconds to what, take him down. What, what class are you? Vagabond. Okay. Um, yeah, and it was, it was, I was also doing blood. I was doing blood damage with it. And it was, it was, or I'm sorry, bleed. And it was great. Um, and I was like, cool. Now I can finally go in the castle, which I feel like I'm slightly over leveled for the castle, but it's an area I haven't been in yet. And the thing about the castle is the castle is Soulsborne. It's not Elden Ring. It is very linear. It is here are some enemies. You either have to like find your way through them or like deal with them in a way that you can like try and cheese your way around them, but you're going to have to figure out how to do it. You can't just run around. You can't avoid it. And um, I tried the castle like I got past the birds and I basically got to the part where it's like you now have to go into the castle and go through the sequence with some exploding barrels and guys who throw stuff at exploding barrels. And it's not that it was difficult, but I did it like four times in a row. 
and I put the controller down and I haven't picked it back up in five days. There's it, I, it's actually funny. I know exactly which part you're talking about. And it's like yeah. once you get past that part, it's like a castle like it opens up. There's there's a lot. Yeah, that's of, what I figured. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, again, it wasn't that it was too difficult. It's just that with Elden Ring, the rest of the game is literally just like, hey, do whatever you want. You can come out at different angles. You've got your spirits if you need to for these difficult fights. You can kind of pick pick and choose your battles. And this was just like, no, you got to deal with this. You got to deal with this like five, six enemy sequence. You can either try and fight them or you can try and run past them. But it's hard to do that because the exploding barrels are in your way. So you got to do this. And I literally just did it three or four times in a row. And I just put the controller down. I was like, this is what I don't like about the previous games. I I know I can go anywhere else, but if I want to do the castle, I've got to get through this and I'm not enjoying this. And so it's it's this weird moment where like I do I do want to go back to the game, but it was this moment where they're like, "Hey, let's let's kind of do it like the old games." And I was done. I was like, "No. No, don't take me back to that old formula." I I don't think that old formula is awful. It's just it's not Elden Ring. And it's everything that has pushed me away from the previous games. Um, yeah. I, and it was I just think, it was just kind of interesting. I think, I, like, I get what you're saying. Um, I think that is just a section of the game that happens to be a space where you have to go through that spot. Like, same with Margit. Yeah. Like, I, but I, I also agree with what you're saying. But that entire castle is so baffled cool. me at the at the things I was able to do to get around. It's and it's huge. There's there's a mm -hmm. dungeon under the castle with like a whole completely separate boss. And it's I had no idea what I was getting into when I was like basically fell into it. There, um, there's yeah. a whole spot it, it, you can go to. And I put a message there to tell people they can go there and people still mark it. Approve poor it. What? Because they don't think I'm being serious. And I laugh at that whenever <laughs> I check that message because it has like 10 appraisals and it has like a bunch of pours. I'm like, no, it's, it's, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I'm not being a jerk. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I watched someone do that section of the castle. My, my friend was playing and he was streaming and I just watched along. So I was a little more prepared for that, but I also chose a completely different class than he did. And I was way under leveled from when I watched him do it. I think I was level like 20. Um, I went samurai because I it, it's pretty well rounded. You have your range attacks, you have your close up stuff. Um, and the the bow helps immensely with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's so much easier to just range those, especially in that barrel room. Um, yeah, it's it, it makes such a big difference. And then, yeah, I, I did spend a decent amount of time leveling up to I think it was like 20 or 22 or something like that um so i don't think i felt the frustration that you felt but that might have just been because i was a little bit more like prepared for what was coming but at yeah, the same the, time i think the range would help yeah yeah, yeah. and i imagine I, through that section i think well yeah and that's that's sort of what i think depending on your class you you would choose to do but i, I do think that it is a very limited um or uh, not limited it's a very it's a very specific section that not yeah you know it doesn't continue like that for the rest of the but. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not expecting it to because because I actually very early on, like two hours into the game, I found a way around the castle. I found a way to get into. Oh, same. <laughs> I think after you defeat Godric, don't you go into his throne room and yeah. there's like a big throne? Yeah, I found a way in there. Yeah. Without ever dealing oh. with him. And I found a whole way around the castle. So I, I completely avoided the castle. And it's not like I think that I have to get through this section. It was just literally this moment where Sunday I had nothing to do Sunday. So I I like. Woke up, had breakfast, had a cup of tea, sat down. And I was like, let's play some fucking Elden Ring, baby. And I like did the castle and I did that segment four times in a row. And I was just like, I have no motivation to play this game now, you know. <laughs> and, and and again, I, I'm not blaming the game for that. It's just that it's so funny to me how I bounced off the previous games. And then I come into Elden Ring and it's doing all these things differently that are speaking to me. And I'm like, great, you know, they've made it more accessible because I can grind in other places. I can figure out ways to level up so I can come back to a boss fight and not have to deal with it. I can just blow through it. And then the one section in there where they're like, hey, let's try the old style. And for me, it's like, hey, maybe the, maybe I like Soulsborne games now that I kind of understand it with Elden Ring. It's like, nope, still don't like that style. <laughs> still don't like that style. And it's so funny because it's not that I was having difficulty because like the first time I did it, I got past first time I did it, 
I died from the barrels. I'm like, okay, I understand now. Second time, I killed him, but I got further up and a guy killed me. Third time, I got past him, and then I, I there's like a side boss that you can just like step into a it, room. It locks you in. The barrels. Yeah. yeah, it locks you in and he killed me. And I'm like, okay. So the fourth time, I was like, I'm just going to, like fourth, fifth time, I tried running past the guys with the barrels, but because of how the barrels are, you have to like pause at certain moments and then they're ganging up on you and she's like, God damn it, I can't even cheese this. And I was just like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I like, think, it, like, it's just a funny moment where going back to the traditional Soulsborne styles made me lose my motivation to play the game. Yeah. You know? I think you can you can run through those barrels, because that's what I started doing when I was you fighting. Could, yeah, you just roll through Fighting them. that guy upstairs. Yeah, you can roll through them, too, and it breaks. Oh, they don't explode if you roll through them? Yeah. yeah you just, exactly. yeah. Oh. Um, see, I was expecting them to be like, mm -mm. if they get destroyed, they explode. Okay. It's that, the that fire that makes them explode. Um, yeah. But that gotcha. that guy in that room, uh, he got stuck between the door and the wall. And that's how I got him. <laughs> nice. We I was so hate. happy. Yeah. yeah. Anything like that. Yeah. So um, I. That being said, though, I can't stop thinking about it, and I do want to pick it up again. I'll probably pick it up tomorrow when I've got some time. Um, there is one thing I want to bring up, which is uh, it's all over the Twitter sphere, which is this UX versus UI hot takes on Elden Ring. I'll kind of tee this up, and then I want to get you guys opinion on it so basically uh i believe kind of the way it kicked off was rami ismail was talking about how uh, I, I don't even know how to phrase it because he didn't phrase it very well but basically he was saying like elden ring is a great game but that should not excuse its bad ui and ux design and then a lot of people said you know oh that's because you want it to be an ubisoft game and have all these crazy icons on it which i think is mistreating his argument and now it became this whole thing of people trying to defend elden ring people saying you don't understand what ui is versus ux and all this other stuff like i'm curious what your guys take on on elden rings uh user interface and user experiences i mean for me coming coming into it not having played a souls game with any significant time um it, it there is a little bit of getting used to like okay well i'm using the i play with a controller on pc um using the d-pad specifically to scroll through your items um mm -hmm. when you're like you can hotkey some stuff and and you know you hold down y if, if you play on a controller you hold down y and it's like a sub menu that you can do uh, your horse call or your if you have a lantern you can do your lantern learning that was sort of like you know there, there's a, a bit of a, a learning uh, there's a gap in between when you start but it, i wouldn't say it's any worse than like what breath of the wild does and i hated breath of the wilds like the way you manage your weapons and stuff like that oh, until funny, yeah. until i got used to it and i still don't like it but I it's like it. i i can at least i can still do it um where it's the same thing here where you know it, it's maybe a little unintuitive but it's not the worst thing in the world and i don't, I don't know yeah that's what i was thinking it's not it's not great but it's not awful yeah it could be better but it's not bad enough to be a deal breaker for yeah. the game. And, and I, I think a lot of, like, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, hindsight's 50-50, but you could have, like, you can look at anything and improve it because it's the, you want to tailor it to yourself. Like, I don't think the Elden Ring people, I, and not, I'm not saying things can't be improved. Things can obviously be improved. There's, you should be able to compare your armor and stuff when you're trying to freaking buy it from a stupid man. That's yeah. super stupid. Uh, yes. It, it's, yes. Especially since previous From Software games do that. That's the other thing. That, anyways, there's things you can improve, but I, I don't think you can play this game and sit there and be like, like, oh, I, I mean, I can make this better. This should be up here for five seconds. And But like, I think this is some of the best UI and ux they have done so far there's some misstep that's a low bar though that's, right, right that's right. a low bar but I, it's yeah. like it, you can't just be sitting there and being like oh they should have done this they should have done that why didn't they do this why didn't they do that because there's a world where they did that and you're still pissed off that they did it that way and not the other yeah. way like there's argument i'm not yeah. completely defending them because there's valid arguments out there but i think too many people are are thinking like they could easily fix it when a company spent years doing things and testing things. Um, yeah. That's just that's like, exactly what I was going to say. It's like, you do, do you not realize how many play tests this thing probably went through? Like they, they had something completely different at the beginning. I guarantee you it was, it was different. And then they 
might have rebuilt it from the ground up. They might have changed things so that it looks nothing like what they started out as. And this is what we got. And it's fine. Like, it, it, there's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's certainly not the worst thing in the world of video games. So I, I just don't yeah. see, I don't see the validity of an argument saying that it's, it's really, really bad and, and a, a, like a subpar, it makes yeah. for a subpar experience. That quick yeah, I would say, I, w- I wouldn't say a subpar, but I mean, there's definitely some like key things that are infuriating, like, like the debuffs and buffs being like really tiny like oh, icons yeah. that are kind of yeah. inscrutable it's i still don't like, understand that necessarily don't yeah, give exactly. that lady a hug no that's the thing is that i didn't realize it was a debuff until i saw it because you can't even tell you have a debuff because it's such a tiny inscrutable icon it's also you know? every time i spawn um this is the way from software works games which are from software games work which is great uh but every time i spawn all of my status of bars it's appear like on big, the screen yeah. and then they yeah. all tick down because it's yeah. adjusting to my new low because i'm wearing something that's lower but i oh. i have no idea what i'm wearing that does that and i've looked through all of my items and i don't know what's doing it and i still can't figure it out it so could, it's pretty great it could um, be stuff on your weapons that's what i thought i don't, I don't know. know i gotta look ah, again weird. but yeah i was like but then, oh but then like I, we yeah, I was just going to say, we, we talked about it last week, but the way that they do multiplayer is stupid. And I'm not talking about invasions. I'm talking about co-op. Like, I understand it's okay to use some things in the world, but like, like transparently, like Will and I were thinking about doing an Elden Ring co-op stream. And it was just like, when, when I started looking into the details, and so part of this is going to sound like production level, but it's not really. I was like, okay, so for us to set this up, both of us have to have these items and I have to request and he has to like join. But before we do that, we have to go into our settings and say that our co op multiplayer password is the same so that it knows to pair us up and not pair us up with randoms. And then also when we're doing that, we can't use a horse. Uh, and if either of us dies, then they drop from the session and we have to do the whole join again. And it's just like, that's God awful. I don't need this entire game to be like drop in, drop out co-op. But if we're going to do it together, at least make it easy and not like tied to items and weird menu options where I literally have to look up a guide online to tell me how to do it and what the limitations are. I it's I, I will say I've logged probably 20, 20 of my f- almost 40 hours has been in co-op and the thing I hate most is that the fact the, is that the world is divided into sections with with yeah. the veil that's drawn that you can't pass. You have to you have to slice through your finger or whatever it is to make the other person leave or the other person does it. And you have to resync. And that's annoying. But it is it, it doesn't actually take that long. If you if you have the same sort of um, uh, grace points like ch- uh, checkpoints that you can warp to. It doesn't take that long and it is a little unintuitive, but it's not any more worse than waiting in a COD like, you know, uh, lobby for for a bunch of players to log in or or, or sync up. But I mean, I, I would argue I would argue both of those are bad, but but it's especially worse because you have somebody that, you know, you're going to join mm-hmm. and that should just be done. You shouldn't have to mess around with group passwords, UI, do anything. Yeah, like I mean, that. I've only I've you only know. had to do the group password once and I, I've never had to change it. And I've never, think, turn, I've never had to turn. I've never had to turn anything else. Period. Yeah. You shouldn't have to do it. Yeah. Period. And it's <laughs> you know? it's. But also, I think it's a it's an addition that's there if you want it. And I don't think it's the main intent. Like I don't even think you should be able to summon someone you want into your game. Like I think you should always be stuck with randoms because I think that's way more fun. And I like. It's nice that they added the ability that you can play with your specific friend or stuff. But like, I I just think it's 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 more exciting to just summon people and just like have that. that no, no, I understand experience. that. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying it should be in there or it shouldn't be in there, but it's just like, they decided that you can pick somebody to join your world and the way that you go around having them join your world and keeping them in your world beyond deaths, etc., is a God awful user experience in terms of how you are supposed to go through the actions of setting that up and putting that in place. So those are things where it's like, yeah, the game's fantastic, but there are all sorts of little things, you know, like you're talking about the equipment comparison, the debuffs, the, the co-op multiplayer, where they decided to implement a mechanic or to leave mechanics deliberately out 
yeah. that just don't they don't. But I think make it's sense. because they're adding a mechanic to a system that's already existed, and they shouldn't have added that mechanic because it doesn't make sense with the system. So if you're not going to make a new system, don't add the mechanic. You know, like yeah, I'm agreeing I mean, with you. I... It's a shitty system for a co-op, but it's a good yeah. system for random people. So don't add the to co-op system summon. onto yeah, the randomized. Yeah. yeah, like, I, yeah, like I mean, they should have sense. invented a new co-op thing. Like, totally. Yeah, you I, I, I have enjoyed playing with my my friends. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I, and I that's, think that's, cool. that's just the type. And and also, I, I, it's gotten to the point where I really don't care that it's like a little obtrusive. Like getting getting to that mm-hmm. point. Like you complain, you complained about the you need you need to have the specific remedy to bring them in. Those flowers that you need to make them, you just need they two are. of them. They're literally all over the yeah. world, and that's all but you why? need is two of them. But why? why not? Why not? That, that's because, what I'm saying. Like, why not? Is, 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 is creating... Imagine, no, no, no. Listen, 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 every listen, multiplayer listen, listen. game, every no, multiplayer listen. game ever, if you wanted to join somebody, you had to go into the game world and craft something to then be able to say, okay, now you can hop in my game. That okay. sucks. Period. I, I, don't, sucks. I, don't think, I don't think that sucks. I think it's an interesting way of teaching the player, hey, this is how the system works. It's very simple. You can get what you need literally anywhere by riding your horse. I also understand why they aren't letting you have your horse during co-op. It's because when you get invaded, you would simply be able to ride away from the other player. Yeah. Like, that's that's the, that's the reason why. So, yeah, you got to walk everywhere, but you're going to walk everywhere anyway. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't mind it. And having logged 20 hours using that system, it's fine for me. So, yeah. And yeah, I, I do. I don't, yeah. It boils down to it's just it's it's the same system as the summoner and invader system because they want you to learn the whole thing no matter what you're doing. Yeah, and again, it's I'm not complaining that there's co-op. It's that the actions you have to go through as a user to make those things happen sucks. Like like there's a very good there's a very good example somebody was saying the main one that people going around is the button you press to open the menu. If you press that button again, it doesn't close uh, to oh, close to open the map. If you press that button again, it does not close the map. So you have to press two different buttons, one to open the map and a different one to close the map. I do hate it's like li- you mean it's like little pressing, things like pressing that. B to close it. I've never had an issue with that ever. No, but I agree. No, no, I, but you, but hit- you press a button to open the map. And then if you press that same button, it doesn't close the map. Yeah, because it's like a very small thing. But it's like, of other games that have maps. The same button does the same yeah. thing. And that, that's user experience. Like like that yeah. is what is that the user's experience? With. What are they expecting to happen? And it's not happening. And that's the that's the small shit that builds up. I so it, it's kind of one of those things I did that. I'd yeah. be a bad UX tester because I don't mind that shit at all. <laughs> it's just like, whatever, you just press B. Yeah. You just learn and, the system and, and then you've learned it and it's it's fine. But I think I think the whole the whole point of bringing this up and I think the whole thing that's kind of gotten lost in the in the Twitter debate around this is that the game's very good. It does have some flaws, but the fact that those flaws are not deal breakers and that you're still wanting to play the game is 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 the sign that it's a good game. You know, it's not flawless. Those are issues. It, it's kind of this thing where it's like people who love the game need to realize it's not perfect. There are flaws with it. And the people who who think the game has bad UX UI need to realize that that is not a deal breaker. And the game is still great besides it. And it's like this middle ground we need to get to. Um, and I just kind of wanted to bring that up because I think that's kind of the the current topic of conversation. Do you, do you also do you also th- I know that we're pretty much done talking about this, but do you also think that it's maybe like a little bit of backlash because of how popular it is like people are looking for something to complain about and not that not that it's not a valid complaint but also like it just seems for me and again like i've already said my piece on this but like it's not a big deal like you just learn that system and it's fine like yeah it's different from other games but so is the control scheme for a a completely different game from a different game like it just i I don't know i i I think it is a backlash but it's almost a backlash between different aspects of the Elden Ring fandom. It almost feels like both sides love the game, but there are people who act like Soulsborne games are the greatest of all time and you can't cheese fights, etc. And and uh, you're a sucker if you don't play it on the hardest difficulty, etc. And it feels like that is the type of community that would take zero idea of any imperfection with the game and it feels like it's the other camp of people who like elden ring who are having this backlash against the other community and saying like no it's okay we can be sane about this this game does have flaws 
you know, because because even Rami Ishmael says like in his original tweet, he says like, hey, this game's fantastic, but the UI UX sucks. Like these are people who love the game and they're pointing out flaws with it. So it doesn't feel like somebody who hates the game in general or trying to backlash against the popularity. It feels like a backlash against like the typically negative stereotypical Soulsborne yeah. edgelord. I, I also think people are assuming because you're criticizing it, it means you hate the game which isn't true. Yeah. And so then they're trying to defend the game because they think this person hates it, but the person doesn't hate it. They're just saying this thing annoys me in it. Um, yeah. And they're, they're defending the wrong thing. Then they're like, how could you not love this game? This game has all these great mechanics. And they're like, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. So oh, we're talking about the one. It's a very disingenuous um, argument. You know? I, I will say, Kyle, you're hundred percent right. You get used to it. I just, every time I opened the map for the first 10 hours, I would hit the button again and it would say menu explanation. And I would be like, that's not the button I want to hit. And I hit B twice. And I relate it to if I'm playing a racing game and I hit the left trigger and it does not reverse me, I would be like, oh, I have like Mario Kart. Like, oh, I have to hit Y or B or something to reverse. Like, yes. it's not it's not I'm not ruining the game for me, but it's like, why can't you just l learn conveyances that are a normal thing these days uh, and it, just stick with it? You it's. Know? It's weird. I I don't think I've done that once because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like I don't know what pops up when you when you press it again. Oh, it's, I think it's I like always an, it's like an explainer menu inside. Yeah. Of so the if you map. hit it again I, inside of it, explains what the menu I, is. I think I always just press B to get out of like menu stuff. Yeah, like, and that, just that could automatically. Be that's fair. I, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it's not like a judgment or anything, but I think I I always do the double tap, and so it yeah. just doesn't work. It's like I think it's from Destiny that works, and so oh, I've always okay. done that. <laughs> Um, so Jake is suffering. Um, okay. Sorry, Jake. Uh, do you two want to talk about your other games on this list, or do we want to jump to the news? Um, I, I'll just mention Lark, Lost Ark. Um, I had a really good episode without Will. Um, I was so was sad. Wonderful. No, actually, um, it's a lot less fun by yourself. I'll say that right now. <laughs> it's, there's nothing. It's just not fun. Um, it is basically every MMO ever, which is go here, kill thing, come back. And... It's very pretty. The fighting and the, and the combat system is is very fun, and the leveling up it feels good. Uh, don't play it by yourself though, because it's just not fun. But um, that's all. I'll I say. will be there next time. I promise. Uh, just okay. Message me the mission you made it up to, so I can get up to that. Okay. Um. However, you got. Uh, Ian, did you want to talk about Kingdom Hearts two? Are you good? I mean, a little bit. I'm just really happy that um I get a two week break while I go on vacation. <laughs> And also, apparently, I, I am doing fast. I'm do, playing the game faster than people were expecting. Uh, they said I'm about 50, 60 percent of the way through that game, man. It's oof. you're not going to get the switch cloud version Ugh. to play on the on the boat. No, do you want to stream it directly to your switch? <laughs> apparently, it runs god it's awful, really even yeah. even for a stream game. Yeah. And uh, that's weird. Yeah uh a uh, game's still bad but at least it's gotten back to the weird craziness and not just the let's play pirates of the caribbean which is god awful zach that, um that game has become a chore to watch as well <laughs> like i put you on and i just listen to you and i type That's, and i have a conversation you with that? you <laughs> because i want a i want to support you but b in no way do i want to watch that video game <laughs> at it's all it's just Dear Lord, but we've had some fun. I read some King of the Hill, Kingdom that was Hearts good. crossover fan fiction. Uh, we what got now? a whole bunch of inside jokes going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I missed people that People donated one. enough for me to read some uh, fan fiction, and one of them was a King of the Hill propane Kingdom give me Hearts. Strength. <laughs> propane, oh give me strength. I don't, I don't do a good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's time for the news, which means it's time to play the news theme, which means I'm going to hit this button. Hopefully it works. Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? What is up news indeed, folks? Guess what today is, it, I'm not gonna let you guess, it's Mario Day everybody! Yay. Woo! It's a shitty corporate holiday! It's is it, it's happy may the force Mario be with you. Is that um, is that a is that a Nintendo creation? Uh I don't know if it's a Nintendo creation or someone pointed it out to Nintendo, but it's stupid is what it is. What, 
What what do you think is the stupidest fan base holiday? I'll go first. I think N I think November 7th for N7 Day for Mass Effect is very stupid because it feels like it started a couple years ago, which was way after Mass Effect was popular. Not to say it's not popular now, but it felt like one of those things where it's like, how do we reinvigorate the fan base, guys? Especially now that we have like a dead game in Anthem and a horrible disappointment in Andromeda. It's N7 Day, guys! You know. It's also like N7 was such a small part of yeah mass effect like like it's obviously it's mentioned and it's like oh like i'm recommending you but like s- the specter program is what you care about like because that's yeah. what yeah that's what shepherd is and it's like no he was n7 before but now he's and it's it's just like why is that the thing that's stuck i guess it sounds cool but i don't know that one's stupid uh, may the fourth be with you was cool when it was just like oh that's a funny way that's funny how that works out that is that is a funny way of saying. Quick, quick question: When did you? I feel like I didn't hear that until two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Yeah, yeah it was around it was like then. high school. Yeah, which it was makes before me Disney feel like, took it over, for sure. Yeah. When did Disney take over? 2012? 2013? Oh, yeah. Was it really that so it was late? before anyone um, really made a huge deal out of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I was kind of okay with that because it was stupid in the first place. But so. I was okay with it, not in the sense that it's May 4th, I'm going to celebrate Star Wars. I was cool with it and how funny that is. It was just like, like oh, It's just yeah, funny that it, it, it works out. Like the yeah, it fits very stuff. well. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you can say that is funny. Um, John Oliver does those those uh, compilations of newscasters saying like, oh, it's it's St. Patrick's Day and they all do their spiel. And then there's one for May 4th. And it's just like, oh, man. they all say the exact same thing. And I, I know I know a couple who got married on May the 4th and it was Star Wars themed. And Oof. it was just like, I'm a huge Star Wars fan and will always be a Star Wars fan. I cannot imagine making like one of the most significant points of my life About based around Star else. Wars. Like, I just can't. Can I-, I can't do it. Can I drop a hot take right here? Uh-oh. Please. I think the line, may the force be with you, is just stupid. I think the force is one of the worst parts of Star Wars. The more it goes on, and them just treating it as like this magical, mysterious, like, it is always right, Jedi absolutes, etc. thing is like... Maybe the Jedi's were the bad guys, especially in the Mandalorian when like they got baby Yoda and, and, and Luke's like, hey, um, you're not allowed to love anybody. You can't have any commitments. It's about the force. And it's like, what if what if that's bad? You know, and, have, and it's have just, you seen The Last Jedi? Uh, it's bad. But yeah. Oh, I mean, because that's like. Luke's but I also think like, like I, I get what you're saying, but I mean, I feel fair, like but. They were pretty clear, at least early on, that the force was like, wasn't it was just a thing that was there. Like people can use it for good or people can use it for bad. But I do agree with you. With like, like I, it got a little yeah. convoluted uh, because of someone who was in charge of the entire thing. <laughs> it was uh, always just a little. I, I mean, pun intended. A little hand wavy, where it's just like, oh, may the force be with you. And it's just like the force is a mystical force. What about oh, may the force? It always felt a little cheesy for me, and I was like, no, go back to the sci-fi space space war stuff. What about know? what about the Schwartz? May the oh, Schwartz, Schwartz, Schwartz is fine. Yeah. That I can get behind. <laughs> um, I I just wanted a quick shout out to uh the LV four two six day is also stupid. Uh, I why would you want to that. celebrate that? I don't what know that? because people want, it's from Alien. It's the name of the planet, and people do it on four twenty six. I've seen it more than once. Which is they why take I bring LV four twenty six to be to be four twenty. What the what? No, yeah, it's stupid. No. It's very stupid. It's Wait, is that is that different from Alien Day? Because there's a thing called Alien Day. I don't know, but I know LV426 is... Four, I, LV426 is the one from Alien, right? Or is and it the aliens, one from Aliens? Yeah. It's, it's, they're, it's in both. It's the same... They haven't started terraforming it in the first one, and the second one they have started terraforming it. So there's people oh. living on it in the second one. There's no people living it on the oh, first one. Oh, wow. I, I don't know why I'm... I forgot they're even at a planet in... I, I put so much yeah, of Alien, the alien movie planet, yeah. in the spaceship. I forget <laughs> yeah. about the planet I mean, part it at is. the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Well, the planet is a spaceship. Shut up, you idiot. 
Um, you're a spaceship. Uh, we're moving on to the news. We've we've already moved on. Um, Force Pokin was delayed. Uh, we're making this a thing. Look, I don't give two craps about this game, but from now on, we're calling it Force Pokin. I'm putting putting my foot down. It's honestly easier to say Force Pokin than it is to say Force Spoken. You know? Can I have a hot take? Yeah. I think they delayed it to uh, get some feedback from Elden Ring. Mm. Really? Like, hey, let's add some of these things that work in this game. What? Let me. Wasn't this supposed to come out soon? Yeah. Like next month like, or something. Yeah. Got delayed to October I, I, now. I don't think they're like overhauling it to be like Elden Ring. Yeah. But I feel like no there might have been stuff the, in there, takeaways, you know? The other big complaint about this game was that um, I believe the main character is a woman of color. And then it came out that there are no, I think it's zero people of color on the writing staff of Forspoken. And they got some, they got some beef for that. I'm going to look that up real quick to make sure I'm not misspeaking. But I don't think that is enough months. This is them just missing deadline. There's not enough months for them to turn around. No, no. That's updates. why I was like hot take. Like, are they going to take learnings from this and be like, tweak some things, not like redo the entire game. Uh, but I just found it interesting that I mean, it's clearly not Ukraine Russia related, uh, unless that game is somehow about that, uh, which would be wild. Um, unlike unlike Advanced Wars, which was also delayed. Yeah, because of oh, yeah. specifically because I of mean that. that one makes a lot of sense as someone who's played a bit of Advanced Wars One, uh, a game that caused, as we found out, nine yeah. eleven. Um, look at my <laughs> Alex Jones moment there. No, it did not actually do that. Uh, but this game, I don't think looks crazy good. I mean, it looks pretty. Um, and I'm not it, gonna lie, I, 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 I thought it was actually called Force Pokin. Force Pokin. Force I, Pokin. I, I, I haven't seen anything for it. I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's fake. Like it's not real. I mean, I just can't I wait know. for five spoken and six spoken. <laughs> yeah. Or, so sorry, here's Hex here's spoken? the uh, Force Pokin is. The it stars a black woman, and it has a writer's room with not a single black person, let alone a black woman, according to the controversy. And they're not sitting. That's that's not good. And uh, I just bring that up because that was kind of the other thing where, like you said, oh, they're delaying it to make it better than Elden Ring, and I was like, maybe they're delaying it because they they're trying to address some of these controversies, <laughs> but they don't have enough time. I think they just weren't no. going to make it. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. That was a that was a facetious hot take. Um, God of War, uh, we love it. You know it. Christopher Judge, uh, boy, uh, TV oh, series adaptation. I by Prime Video. I don't think I think this is a report. It's not confirmed. Uh, but supposedly there will be a God of War TV series adaptation on Prime. Uh, like I can see that. That'd be cool. I mean, maybe retell. I mean, you know, they're just gonna do something stupid. But I think like doing a god of war story would be cool or like re like something from it's the just, first it's gonna games. be it's gonna be it's yeah it's not gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be boy it's gonna be that story yeah. it's probably not gonna be christopher judge because i i believe he's in like god awful physical shape yeah because of all the acting and stunts well, he's teal, done with war yeah um once they took the symbiote out he, he was yeah having he's some got weak she's there for a while um i I just uh look, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pull it out. I didn't really like the God of War game. And so I just don't give two shits about this because I just don't see how this being a TV series is going to be different from the game. Like if you like the game and you like the game, the game presents that story very well. So why does it need to be? It just feels like Sony's trying to milk this franchise in a bad way where it's just like we have to do a TV show of this. And yeah. you're not really going to get anything new or interesting from it. I mean, I, I this... think I, th I think they're trying to maybe get the crowd that like knows God of War by association of video games and be like, hey, this is a pretty popular video game. Let me see what this shows about. I don't mm -hmm. I I've never played any of them because I was not a, a PlayStation boy growing up. Um, so I, I have no like emotional attachment to them. But I mean, I'd be I, I want to see what it looks like first. But I'm going to sneeze. I was going to say, I have a sealed envelope somewhere that says Ian hates God of War, but it's mixed in with all the other sealed envelopes that I've say Ian about hates. It before. I wouldn't I say hate it. I just no, no, I'm just wasn't joking. that impressive. Um, but I think, I think with this, it's just the thing that really, 
okay, so okay, let's go through it. They've, so PlayStation has a couple other properties they're trying to come out with. Twisted Metal, it's like, yeah, I, sure, still, you know, like, yeah. but but I, I'm thinking about it in terms of like what would appeal to outside a video game audience with that. Like what trends are you riding? And it's like Twisted Metal. It's like it's like yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy type humor, crazy characters, action, etc. Cool, got that. Uh, Last of Us, you've got zombies, you've got like HBO primetime character driven, you've got some like father daughter type things, all these popular themes in, in movies nowadays. God of War, you've got, I don't know, like pseudo Viking, but it's not political like Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's more grounded. It's kind of trying to do God story, which you could but that doesn't really hit well. Like American gods isn't doing that well. And even once is on the down trend. So it's like, well, this doesn't feel like it's, it doesn't feel like they're capitalizing on anything. They're just doing it because they think they can do it. And like you, the, all the other series you mentioned, even though they're not doing this for the last of us, it's, it's a big enough thing to like tell other stories in that world. But yeah, in God of war, I really don't care about anyone else because outside of Kratos and gods, it's kind of the same thing. So unless yeah. Unless you're telling like a whole new cloth story with all these people, that's fine. But if you're just retelling any of the games, or especially the the God of War game, like I, that game is already really a movie TV show already that I get to play. So I don't want to sit back and not be able to play it and watch it. Um, but You'd yeah, rather it's just watch weird... it with the with the controller in your hands, like you did when you played the game. I mean that game. You play a lot. That of game does have a decent amount I of gameplay. I'll, I'll admit to that. Uh, it's like, not Last of Us. <laughs> no, I think. I mean, I don't agree with that either. But, anyways, I, I was just gonna say, <laughs> I, I do think, like, even with the Uncharted movie coming out, I think Uncharted would have been a better TV show or miniseries than it would have been just coming out with a movie. Yeah, maybe. Um, I watched that in IMAX. It was rough. Oof, why would you... the CGI looked really good though? Well, I didn't That's technically good. pay for it because I have AMC A list or whatever. It's wow, called. Okay. we um, get it. You're rich, so, Kyle. Yeah. I, I know, the crazy I know. thing about Uncharted is you could have totally done Uncharted well. They just yeah. didn't. Oh yeah, totally. Oh, the writing the the writing was the worst part of that. Entire you could have put a mustache on Mark Wahlberg, yeah. but you didn't, did you, Sony? He has it's all about it, UX. He has know? it for for <laughs> one minute at the end of the movie, which they spoil in one of the TV spots. Oh, and then he makes a he makes a puberty joke, and that's it. Man, that and, weird. And we, uh, the sequel will be better, maybe, because there's guaranteed Probably. to be one now. That weird scene in the Uncharted movie where the map comes up and then a menu explanation menu comes up, yeah, and then it, like can't. Go and there's, out there's, there's like, like so there's like weird. a controller that pops up from your seat, and then and you're like, Sully oh, okay, just yeah. says, "I hit B," and looks at the camera and says, really? "Just like Kyle would." <laughs> I, tried, so I tried to see the movie. I tried to see the movie with somebody, but we had to like use both the same password to go and got you, got you, yeah. you had to stand in the same spot and then yeah, sit in the same seat. Yeah, I didn't have a furled finger. Oh. Um, and then I died halfway through it. I had to yeah. leave the movie. I forgot to take those two flowers outside the theater, and I, I yeah. couldn't make the remedy. Too much. Yeah, like, um, this is real stupid. <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, I don't even know what I want to talk about. Uh, I thought this was funny. I'm not doing that next one. Skull and Bones somehow oh. came back into the news with a new logo that makes it look like not a pirate game anymore. Um, they're getting an insider can testing we, program. Can we put some bets down? It's been a long time since we've seen this game. I guarantee you they have made some large scale changes. <laughs> Previously, this game was shown as a like like multiplayer battle arena, not necessarily a MOBA, but more like a World of Warships type thing. But you're in pirate ships. And I don't think it was multiple people per ship. Like you were just on one ship controlling yeah. that. And it was all about multiplayer base, you know, grind your skill, etc. What do you guys think the game is now? Because I don't think it's that anymore. You know? I think they had the idea, which is a good idea of taking the black flag pirate ship stuff and making a whole game about that. Uh, and I think their original thought was, Hey, what if we just did like a quick multiplayer game where people get to be their ships and they sail around and stuff. And then I think sea of thieves got announced and they were like, "Ugh, we can't just do that. And then sea of thieves came out and they said, we really can't just do that because that game launched terribly. We need, single player content or content for people to play and then i think that's just what they're doing and it's it's become like a sunk cost fallacy for 
Ubisoft mm-hmm. where they're like, we already put this much money into it. Um, and I just want to say that the game was first announced in 2017. The uh, on This is a GameSpot article, and for GameSpot articles, they usually link the most recent video anywhere, that a uh, GameSpot video that's featuring that. And the we most recent video here... World. Yeah, you from, work at GameStop, I, okay, I, come on. I work at, I know, do you guys want a PS5? <laughs> um, the most <laughs> recent video is from E3 2018, <laughs> is the closest wow. video they had to tag on this. I will also mention that the ampersand in the logo has been replaced with a spelled out and, uh, which oh. you, they're already trying to lengthen Big the game spenders. there. Um, and it's just, yeah, it says... It's supposed to release this fiscal year, the article says, written by a person. Uh, Sorry, so you has this been confirmed, or is this just you thinking there's single player in the game? Oh, sorry. That whole single player thing is, I think, that's what happened. Like, that's my theory of what I think happened. And it just went away because they were just trying to figure things out. Because I think Sea of Thieves came in, ate their lunch, threw their lunch up because Sea of Thieves wasn't that great, and has since wolfed some of it back down and gotten to a place where they have to at what? least do it. It ate the vomit, Ian, uh, where it's gotten <laughs> a lot better, but it's just Skull and Bones coming back, baby. I, I, um, I, I, my take is I think it's either it's either a battle royale or it's an Overwatch clone. Oh, battle royale. So it's, it's, Instead of it just being like World of Warships where you have your ship leveling up, it's more like, oh, no, you go in and now it's 5v5 and it's basically Overwatch, but you're a ship now, you know? Like, I don't see them doing anything interesting or exciting with this. I think they're just going to try and take one of the other generic uh, multiplayer battle type games or multiplayer FPS type games and do it with pirate ships. I will say someone mentioned they updated the logo, which means it might be modern. And I was like, oh, I could I, see that uh, maybe, but well, yeah, no, sorry, it still Kyle. has the helm. That's no, I, I have I have no thoughts because I've never played any game. For You've never played any game ever. I've never played any game ever. I don't know what I'm doing on. This Yet podcast. you hit B when you're on a map menu. You know what? It's, 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 because, I, it's because I don't <laughs> play games that I do that. Ah, right? uh, we you figured know, it honestly, out. Honestly, I think Kyle's probably the closest. Because we have no idea what this is. They have gone through so many reworks <laughs> and kind of the, the, the unconfirmed rumor was that the only reason why they are trying to force this game is because Ubisoft has a deal with the government of Singapore where they are getting some tax credits, kickbacks type of thing, but they have to put out a Singapore main developed game and that is Skull of Bones. So they can't oh, kill the project, oh. but they still have to put it out at some point. So that's why it's Wasn't languishing so much. A TV show? When it was first announced, as well, I think you're. you're I think you're I, thinking there's of the something, Netflix show. That yeah, is there's different. something on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was the same, but uh, maybe I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, the, they announced a release we'll date for up. Gotham Knights. Uh, it'll be October of this year. Uh, they also announced surprising a lot of people. An Overwatch Two PvP beta is coming soon. Uh, I signed up game... for it. It's great for you. Um, I thought they would have canceled it by now and just been like, hey, um, why do you keep highlighting everything, Kyle? <laughs> Is that oh, you? I don't know. I'm just playing around with oh, my I'm mouth. so confused. I thought you were trying to get my attention. No. Um, oh, I'm highlighting. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I find that so funny. <laughs> I'm um, just like playing with my mouse. I don't know. <laughs> No, oh no, I, I'm sorry. I have to go backwards. Will, what? you're correct. You're yes! correct. Yes. Let me read you this quote. I, like, I thought you were correct, but I feel like I brought it up previously and I ended up being wrong. But I looked this up. As revealed by Atlas Entertainment's Andy Horwitz, one of the main sources of inspiration for the TV series was the 2017 trailer saying that, quote, from the moment we saw the trailer in 2017, we became excited at its potential. Like, that 2017 E3 trailer was so good that it is the only thing keeping this, keeping the game alive, and it spawned an entire TV series between uh, Ubisoft and uh, Atlas Entertainment. It's probably dead in the water by now, but it's so crazy that that trailer came out, everybody said, yes, 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 hell yes, and the game is just sputtered. I don't I can't remember believe that they lost trailer all that at all. I, I don't remember. It's the first, it's the first one. Game. 
No, I don't. The very I, first know, I don't trailer. remember the trailer. Is what I'm saying. It's, what do you? I I don't know. Why I'm getting upset, but it's just like <laughs> you just described it. It was just Black Flag as as a multiplayer. Like it was just pirate ship battle. Okay. That's all it was. Okay, it's, it's just. It's. No, I'm sorry. I think why I'm getting upset is because like that's pretty much the only significant thing they have ever shown about this game. So you either know nothing about the game or you've seen that trailer. <laughs> Is basically I, the way I'm I thinking just don't about it. I guess I gotta go watch the trailer now. I don't know. You I mean, really don't have to, though. <laughs> um. Anyways, folks, we gotta go watch the trailer. Um. No, Escape from Tarkov. I want to talk about. I want to talk about a story. I want. Yeah, I want to talk about Escape from Tarkov. This is a crazy story. As oh, the this resident is cool. Tarkov expert, um, uh, Tarkov is a really weird, wonky game. But one of the things they do in the game that's weird is that the in-game currency is rubles. Um, so you earn, you have like rubles when you start the game. That's how you buy weapons outside. That's how you like buy med packs and med gear. And that's how when you pull, when you pull loot out of the zone, that's how you sell it. You get rubles for it. But there are certain vendors in the game that require either dollars or euros. And so you have to convert your rubles to euros or dollars. Again, even though these are real world currencies, they're, they're only living within the game. However... Escape from Tarkov is supposed to be super realistic and they're they're try hard. So the in-game currency conversion yes. rate between Tarkov rubles to Tarkov euros and Tarkov dollars is tied to the real world rate. Yes. So due to all the uh, economic sanctions against Russia and the pl extreme plummet of the of the <laughs> the rubles value <laughs> Basically, Tarkov's economy kind of sucks right now because your main currency is now close to worthless. And there's certain vendors that you have a lot more trouble buying things with. So one of the examples was this was from on February 24th. Somebody uh, in the in the uh, Tarkov uh, subreddit asked, I swear when I was he said, why do dollars cost 139 rubles now? I swear when I was playing last week, dollars were 128. Now they are 139. And then as of this article, which was uh, a couple days ago, they're uh, they're now 160. So, so literally the in-game economy is like 60, 70, 80, 90 percent more expensive for certain items because of the economic Russian, Does, the, the Russian economic class. This is this is an actual one hundred dollar ruble bill that I got when I was in Sochi. And it is Ooh. it used to be worth like three dollars and 15 cents or three dollars and 10 cents. It is now <laughs> worth less than a dollar, which is wow. crazy. That's crazy. Do the, do the merchants in the funny. game change their prices or are they consistent? I think I think some of them may. Those they probably only have like, like rotating you, shops, etc. If you could now afford rubled price things because you have so many American dollars that you can buy so many more rubles. I, possibly, but I think the way it was described was that the main currency is rubles. And so you would trade into those other currencies just to purchase uh, in so their stores. But someone who had a bunch of... Someone may have. May have. Yeah. That'd be pretty wild. Um, and I think the last thing they announced the GTA five and GTA online next gen upgrade pricing, which I believe, oh, this article, it's, uh, it'll it's be 50% bad. off, uh, first up, but it'll be $10, uh, for the, oh no, sorry. It'll be 75% off for the first three months, nine, $10 after the three months, the game will cost $40. Um, Wow. That's kind of wild. How old is this game again? I mean, 2013, almost 10 years. Yeah. Sorry, that was, that was... Oh, man, and that was PS5 pricing. Xbox pricing is only 50% off for the first three months, so it's $20 upgrade. Or $20... Uh, I don't think it's upgrade, but... Um, Are they yeah, I still... I need to look this up. Is if there you a price remember, for one upgrade of the... now that I'm... No, there's or no upgrade. That the was the thing. Game. You have to buy the whole game. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things that I need to... Um, if you remember, before the PS5 came out, they opened one of their um, one of their trailers oh, with yeah. Grand Theft Auto. And everybody got super excited. They said, oh, shit, it's GTA 6 announcement. And instead, they were just being like, hey, GTA 5, it's going to come to uh, PS5 at some point. Uh, and it's going to be free. And they said it's free. I and so I need to... Conf free original okay wait uh okay wait sorry no i i thought they said 
Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. The standalone PS5 version of Grand Theft Auto Online will be free on that platform for the first three months. I th but I feel like the original promise was the full game. Anyways, it's Sony. Of course, they're going to break their promise and charge you more because they're assholes right now. Is this yep. just bonkers? This is so stupid. And, and the crazy thing is, like, it looks good, but I saw screenshots comparing it to the PC version. It looks pretty much the same as the PC version. So, so it's yeah. like... If it was a free update, I would think about like, oh, I'll play some GTA Five again and go through some stuff, you know? But yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Uh, folks, that's going to do it for the news, which means that's going to do it for the show, which means it's time to play the outro music. Yeah, things are working on my side today. Um, Ian Gibson, Kyle Bailey, Hi. thank you so much for joining Hi. me. I couldn't decide if I wanted to say your last name or not. I, I did know what it was. Just, thank you. Um, quick here, uh, we got a quick email in. I forgot to read this. Uh, this is from Dave in Seattle. Would it be cheaper to get a PS4 and take out the graphics card for the PC than actually buying a graphics card by itself? Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't that soldered to the motherboard though? Yeah, but what's solder? I feel like even if you did the full like desolder and installed it and backward is engineered it, it probably still would be cheaper than buying the equivalent graphics. Take card. it, take it from the PlayStation Three, which has the cell processor, which we all know yeah. is the most powerful processor ever. So that's right. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I saw this uh, email came in and I thought it was ridiculous, so I had to read it. Um, what do we got going on Saturday? I'll be streaming. 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, so please tune into that. Uh, and then uh, next Tuesday, I'll be streaming again. And we might be doing Lost Ark on Tuesday, but we're not 100% sure yet. So stay tuned. Subpixel team on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Subpixelfilms.com. You can see all of our content. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. And I hope that everyone is safe and healthy and I'm just gonna stretch a little bit longer. I realized with the stream deck, I don't get to see how long the song is, so I don't know when it's ready to cut. Despite, oh wait, no, it tells me on here. Okay, bye everyone. Bye.